please. As the number of COVID-19 cases continue to rise, scientists are working hard in labs across the country to create a vaccine. Moderna, which is one of the most promising COVID vaccine creators, has already started phase three trials late last month. Joining us with more on that front is Dr. Carlos Del Rio. He's the executive associate dean at Emory School of Medicine and Grady Health System. He's also an investigator in the Moderna COVID-19 vaccine trials. And Dr. Del Rio, thank you for being with us today. Delighted to be here with you. Let's talk a little bit first about what you're doing in these vaccine trials. What, what kind of work are you performing? Well, I think what's happening right now is we're taking the what's called a phase three study is taking place. And, you know, phase three is when you actually test the efficacy of the vaccine. So this is really where the, the rubber meets the road. This is when you try to see if a vaccine that has proven to be safe and, and has proven to be immunogenic can prove to be effective. So you have to enroll large numbers of people. We're talking about 30,000 people that are gonna be enrolled across 89 sites in the United States. And half of them receive the vaccine, half of them receive placebo. You as an investigator or the, pay, or the participant does not know what, who gets what. And then you follow the participants and you follow them for you know, infections, you follow them for developing infection, you follow them for complications. And then at some point in time, uh, you know, there's a data safety monitoring board, an independent group that is looking at the data with regularity. And at some point in time, they may say, well, the vaccine works, let's stop the study, or the vaccine does not work, let's stop the study. So that's really, it's really the most exciting phase of development of a vaccine or, or a drug. We started hearing a few weeks ago that the FDA is looking for the vaccine to be at least 50 percent effective before they'll approve it. Uh, Dr. Anthony Fauci had said <clears throat> it'd be great to see 65, 70, even 75 uh, percent efficacy. Uh, that actually surprised me because I guess we've all been thinking of this as a silver bullet. But w what would it mean if you saw something that was at least 50 percent effective and maybe up to 75 percent effective? What would that mean in terms of changing COVID and changing our own behaviors and what we could do? Well, you know, developing vaccines against respiratory virus is incredibly difficult. If you think about the flu vaccine that we use every year, it's only about 40 to 60 percent effective. So a 50 percent efficacy would be transformative, would really mean that, you know, it's much better than zero, which is what we have right now. And remember, you want to get to a point that we call uh, a herd immunity. And between the people that have been infected plus the people that you're vaccinated, at 50 percent, you would get there. So I think, you know, it would really be a game changer if we get a vaccine with 50 or greater efficacy. You know, when you take the flu vaccine, even uh, sometimes you, you get the flu anyway, but a lot of times it's, it's weaker. The symptoms are weaker. Do you think that would be the case with a COVID vaccine as well? That's one of the theories. One of the theories is that you may still get infected, but you will not develop complications. You will not end up in the hospital, you will not end up in the ICU. And that, I think, would be also quite, quite a transformative, right? Because you will definitely decrease the morbidity and mortality of this disease. Where do you think we stand? How long before we actually will get a vaccine, A, that's approved, and, and then B, that, that is massively um, deployed? Well, you know, uh, as this clinical trials, this phase three clinical trials are starting, the government through BARDA has actually made investments in three companies to help them develop their vaccines ahead, ahead of approval. So they're producing millions of doses of vaccines before approval. The whole idea is that if one or more of these vaccines shows efficacy, then by the time it shows efficacy, you don't need to start producing massive doses. You would have millions of doses already ready to go produce and ready to deploy. So if everything goes well, you may be in, talking about March or April of next year, where you could say, okay, we got a vaccine and we got plenty of doses to start giving out to people. Now, if the vaccine doesn't show efficacy, well, you know, all you lost is, is money because the reality is, you know, you, you will, nothing will happen. So I think it's a very good decision to have gone forward with the production of the vaccines in this way. You sound pretty optimistic. Is that a fair assessment? Uh, I'm very optimistic and I'm very hopeful. I am, you know, first of all, I would say that, you know, we went from discovering a virus, sequencing a virus, to giving a vaccine for the first time, to putting a vaccine in a human in 65 days. Nowhere in the history of mankind has the timeline for a vaccine been so short, so quick. And it's because of the technology we have, it's because of the research we have. So I'm incredibly help, hopeful that we will get to, a, to a one or more effective vaccines as a result of that. 